Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. At this final Panorama event night uh, called Rigid Regimes, uh, the video presentations, the interviews, and even a website that we'll show you tonight are all somehow related to systems, beating them, joining them, rephrasing them. and Diamond made a presentation in which they rework a utopian vision of a 19th century religious fanatic and uh, Tom and Jan Willem are here to present their work themselves. Give them a warm applause. Uh, this is one of the um, city plans he designed and when we saw this uh, image we were very uh, fascinated by the mathematical structure and the radicality of the image of because this was his idea of um, making an ideal city of making the perfect city for everybody to live in and we decided to make a sculpture out of this um, and that's that's the game board you have also been seeing in the video and when we first made the sculpture it was it was actually a much smaller version which you see here on the floor we realized that somehow there was a lot of resemblance with a game board, uh, some kind of strategical board. And we decided to enact on this intuition of a game and uh, made a first performance of it where we would place uh, colored pieces on the board and the audience would not know the rules of the game we were playing. So we kept it as a very hermetic game. And in a way this was to ridicule the um, utopian vision of brothers on the one hand, and also to show its, yeah, its absurdity and its, its the radicality so of it. And in the end, you can say we uh, shifted the absurdity of brothers to a different, more hermetic uh, context. And in our works, we often apply this way of working by distorting and disconnecting uh, our context. And by doing so, uh, we try to reveal the absurdity and the fragility of utopian visions and models. That's it. <laughs> so hopefully. Yeah. So, why did you start working with uh, tape? Um, well, uh, one night I um, discovered that um, when you leave uh, a roll of tape hanging at the edge of your desk, and you, um, yeah, when you wake up the next morning, you can see that it slowly unwound itself just by the force of gravity. Mm -hmm. And when I discovered this, I thought it was really, uh, really fascinating. Mm -hmm. But yeah. what fascinated me the most was that, um, yeah, when you have um, all the rolls from the same brand, from the same package, they still have different speeds of which they develop. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was really fascinating because 
I always thought because they were so um, made like in a factory and really, uh, yeah, like, yeah, you have the feeling everyone is exactly the same because it's just from a machine, but they also... Oh, you always have the standard uh, deviation. Uh, yeah, yeah. They, they all have kind of, a, to me, a, a unique character because mm -hmm. they have a different speed, so I was really um, kind of, yes, finding uh, some similarities between uh, a living thing and uh, an inanimate in object like roll of tapes. How, how long did this take, this whole process? I can imagine it's like a, a work of a monk or something. Yeah, it, it, it took pretty long. It was about six months, but okay. it was, um, if I had to redo it, I could probably do it really yeah, a lot faster, but it's just a lot of experimentation. And, and I also experimented with snails on it to kind of make that yeah. association to yeah, see it as animals and different speeds, but... Who's, who's faster, uh, the snail or the tape? Yeah, the snail is much faster because yeah. the, the roll of tape takes about 12 hours.